Hi, we're the 16th Harasses India Meet, and I have the pleasure of sitting with Benjamin Butler. Hello, Benjamin. Hello. And Benjamin, you are the founder of a very interesting company, the... Embassy of the Future. The Embassy yes. of yeah. the Future, exactly. <laughs> the Embassy of the Future. That is straight up the coolest uh, title that I've heard and the coolest name of the company that I've heard in the last few days. Right, so well, tell you. us a little bit more because you're also the futurist of Horasis. That's right. That's right. In fact, what I love about Horasis is, is actually a Greek word, yes. meaning vision. Vision, yes. And, and what I realized as, well, as a former investor, I realized that in our world, we think that more knowledge, uh, more data yeah. equals more intelligence. Mm. It doesn't always. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, you read in the, like we spoke about this morning, uh, sometimes by decluttering the yeah. mind, you can see more clearly. Mm -hmm. So in the Tao, the Tao, yes. the ancient Tao Te Ching, it says yes. that the path to knowledge is to acquire something every day. Yeah. So it could be like knowledge. Uh, the path to enlightenment, which is clarity of seeing, seeing mm. truth. Mm. Uh, one loses something, one drops something each mm -hmm. day. So my journey from For university, investor, yeah, yes. investor, then futurist, I yeah. realized, oh, it's not always, you know, masses of data, masses yeah. of information, more knowledge, more Doesn't knowledge. Doesn't always get you the, the better answer. Perhaps. No, no, no. And, and yeah. you know, with artificial intelligence and stuff, maybe it's different, but as a human being, yeah. having that vision yeah. It counts for a lot. And what I realized was even in the investment world, sometimes I remember someone from um, your sovereign wealth fund uh, yeah. in Singapore. Yes. Uh, he said, what's your prognosis on mm -hmm. the global economy? And I, I said, and then I, I, I said, look, the Fed thinks this, mm -hmm. but what they're actually going to do is something else. Mm. And he said to me, uh, Benjamin, do, do you have more data? Yeah. Uh, you know, what to data? back that up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he wasn't being sarcastic at all. He was like, what data are you seeing? Mm. And I, I said, well, actually, they probably have 10 times as much data as me, but it's not about the data. The data. All the time. Yeah. Always, you know, there's a time and place for, for data. You know, if I'm Elon Musk running Tesla, yeah. I, I want a hell of a lot of data. Before making to, a decision, fair enough. Yeah, well, yeah. for a car, you know, for an electric car and, and whatnot. But as a human yeah. being in this world, yeah. um, sometimes, less is more. Um, so, so talk me through a little bit, you know, and especially for our viewers out there, tell me a little bit about what exactly is a futurist? What do you do? And I realize from what I understand from you, there's just a few hundred yeah. uh, currently. So tell us a bit more, please. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a, a relatively new, new profession, yeah. kind of. I mean, there have been, um, there have been philosophers and sages that yes. have advised leaders throughout cool. antiquity yes. and, and, you know, very established in places like India. Chanakya, yeah. for example, yes. third, fourth century BC, arguably was a futurist. Uh, um, mm -hmm. But in recent years, they say H.G. Uh, Wells was mm -hmm. the, yes. the kind of grandfather of fu future. People keep saying futurism, but really it's futures. And futures, future, oh, and okay. Futures research, yeah. Right. Um, and um, what do futurists do? Um, they, there's a, some people think it's about prediction. Mm -hmm. um, Very oracle but, style. Yeah, just completely about prediction, mm. and, and it's not. And, and yes, I do practice that dark art of prediction occasionally, mm -hmm. and, and when I was an investor, a lot more. But really, for me, is there's an art that there's an element of knowing the facts and knowing mm. empirical data and sometimes even having glimpses of the future Predictive. yeah, yeah and, and coming back and telling people but the, the other side of it is very much about creating and shaping mm. the future um, and and helping expand people's minds mm. so that they can create desirable futures yeah. Um, so and, and what yeah. is what is the process? Because it, because it's quite interesting, you know. On your website, there's quite a lot on philis on philosophy, on spirituality. We were talking about data. In in some cases, it might almost seem, you know, like diff the, like quite opposing uh, subjects. Yeah. How does what's the approach? How does all of this come together? Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of techniques. 
Yeah. Um, and so some of the academic futurists that are teaching master's programs mm -hmm. and PhDs now have an armory of, mm. of, of techniques uh, and, and which are important. Mm. At the same time, like anything, don't get lost in the techniques. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because at the same time, you need your imagination. You need that, that mind. That, so the reason on my, my website, you'll see a lot about philosophy and, and, and creating, expanding the mind, expanding consciousness is because that's super important. But, you know, if you have a, you know, if someone that's watching this is interested in, in, in techniques, mm. just there's lots online and there's great right. universities out there teaching things. Uh, one of the early universities actually was in Taiwan, Tamkan yeah. University. Wow. Uh, there's a lot of great work in Australia, Sahel, mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in Nayatollah, um, who I know. Um, he's got one of the most useful techniques today yeah. called CLA. and. Um, it's all about analyzing um, the future from the perspective of layers mm -hmm. and they go deeper and deeper. So you look at data and things at the top, yeah. but by the end you're looking at something much more um, uh, profound, like the metaphor mm. that society is built upon. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a lot of people in our society treat the human body like a computer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they use a metaphor like the brain is like the yeah. whatever CPU, which is actually wrong biologically and otherwise. And, uh, but that wrong metaphor causes mm. lots of problems in our society. So a good futurist might try and help an organization change, change yeah. the metaphor, yeah. change the story. Change the story. Yeah. So yeah, the, the hope really is have this pro proverb uh, that those that tell the stories rule the world. Yeah. Um, there's another, uh, Michael, I think Michael Rukeza, um, a writer, said, the world is not made of atoms, mm. it's made of stories. Oh, that's, that's incredible. So I'm fascinated by stories and how do we change the stories to create a beautiful yeah. future. Yeah. Beautiful. And Benjamin, a question, right? You know, we're, uh, we're, when we're talking about the future, Especially after COVID, for quite a few companies, there was this sentiment of, oh my God, we do a five-year, a 10-year forecast, you know, but then you have an event like this, which comes up and it almost, uh, you know, all of the planning that, uh, that we do. So certain companies are also pulling back from doing very, you know, from almost looking into the future because they mm -hmm. think it's, uh, you know, uh, it's almost like looking into, um, you know, in, in, into sort of the, uh, into the glass. What is your view and what would you say to them? How can you look into the future, uh, you know, in spite of, you know, certain big uncertainties that might, uh, you know, that might come into play? You always need on staff or as an outside consultant, a futurist or someone that's looking. Big picture. A big picture and trying to constantly expand yeah. the mind. And, and, you know, it's, it's a classic, like in the investment world, yeah. for example, my old world, um, uh, just when you need people the most, hmm. they fire them. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and I've had it as a futurist. I, yeah. you know, I remember I was advising one consulting company on a, reta a monthly retainer, and I was giving them forecasts and yeah. everything, and, and the proverbial hit the fan as I expected. Yeah. And at that moment. The company is in complete disarray. They don't right. know what to do. Rabbits in the headlights. At the moment, they probably need a futurist. The, the most. most is when they call me up and say, "Look, we can't extend the retainer," and ah. and, and, and that happens. Yeah. You know, and, and Cela V, uh, my life continued. But yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, my advice is you've always got to be looking beyond. Beyond and yeah, and sometimes even if it sounds a bit crazy looking at like I, I do work with the United Nations group um, one of the long, longest term mm. uh, groups at the UN it's a subgroup of the UNF triple C that organizes the COP events mm -hmm. um, right uh, it's called resilience yeah. frontiers um, and it's 2050 2070 same for embassy of the future Got um, it. in Brazil we're going to do a time travel to 2070 wow. but it, it doesn't mean it's irrelevant and it it's all sci-fi doesn't diminish the now no, 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 because yeah. then you bring it back. back. Right, and, right. And uh, I was talking to a French 
gentleman here, um, a geopolitical expert, uh, Nicholas, I don't know if mm. you spoke to him, but he, he said in French we call that what's between sci-fi and now, but it's a, a much longer than most corporations mm. think, we call in French anticipations. Right. Um, and I'm sure you can <laughs> pronounce it better than me, but so that's, I'm not going to embarrass myself. But uh, and Amazing. that's kind of what I, I I do look at the long, really long term but stuff. Bring but bring it back yeah. to the now. Yeah. 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 And one final question for you, Benjamin. Over the last few days, we've been talking about Greece. We've been talking about India. Yeah. As a futurist, what is your view of these two countries in the larger sort of spectrum, in the larger um, uh, scope of the world? Yeah. I'm fascinated to be here yeah uh, and I'm fascinated to go back to India again next year but um, I believe one of the shifts we, 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 there's a there's a culmination of a crescendo of utter mm, epic mm. To, to borrow a Greek uh, word <laughs> um, mega trends are all at turning points mm. you know technological with AI mm. and way bigger than the fourth industrial revolution um, mm -hmm. as WEF purports it um, and one of them, yeah. uh, I can't list all of them, but uh, you know, and our relationship with nature is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. probably a one in 10,000 year event uh, changing. But one of those big shifts is uh, geopolitical. Yeah. And the rebirth, the reawakening of Eurasia. Mm. And, uh, and, and obviously the USA has pro a problem with that at the moment, which mm. is causing tectonic shifts and earthquakes and, yeah. and uh, the possibility of war has increased. Well, yeah, we, we are in war, um, uh, but mm -hmm. it could intensify. But mm -hmm. zooming out, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd agree with uh, people like Parag, Parag mm -hmm. Khanna, um, who um, wrote a book, The Future is Asian. And I, I said to him, why is it the future is Asian? Because in, when I looked at all the diagrams, mm. uh, many of them said Eurasia. Yeah. And, ah. uh, and uh, anyway, I won't tell you what he said, but, uh, <laughs> but um, I believe the future is Eurasia. I've not written off the US. The yeah. US has a big role to play. Yeah. Um, in that context, India being obviously the world's biggest population and, yeah. and growing, and, um, but also having this fountain of ancient knowledge as well, which I think becomes more and more relevant as another mega trend kicks in, which is a shift in consciousness. Uh, and Greece mm. you know, being the international yeah. shipper and all, but, uh, and its location. Um, absolutely, um, a lot of people have said it's almost sort of that, that stepping stone into Europe for yeah. uh, for India in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see it as part of that that bigger bigger map, the New Silk Roads, and yeah. uh, you know, some people associate New Silk Roads with China's agenda. I don't. I, yeah. I, I see this bigger Eurasia reawakening. And I'm, I'm excited by it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, Benjamin. It Thank was you. such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> Thank you.